Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti. It's Town of Old Sherbrooke night tonight on the Pete Mazzetti Show. And with me to discuss what's going on is the first selectman of the Town of Old Sherbrooke, the most honorable Carl Fortuna. Good evening, Good Peter. Good evening, sir. Good to see you. Are How are you? Is this a new setup? Yeah. Yeah. It is. I feel like it's a lot farther away. It, I know. It, I know. You, new chairs. I thought we were a lot farther away than we than we used to be. New chairs. Yes. Yeah. yeah. New no, chairs. Very new nice. table. New rugs. These are beautiful studios, and yes. I um, I tell people what a great resource Valley Shore Community Television is. Okay. For meetings, Pete Mazzetti show, of course, the monthly updates, and um, it's just. I mean, it's an amazing studio. Yes. Uh, it is. I mean, and. The lighting and the equipment and the people, they're, they're wonderful. So thank you for having me on. You're welcome. Thanks for coming down. All right. So I, from what I understand from doing my research for tonight Ooh. is we have a new DPW director. Yeah. yeah. So Larry Bonin retired. Larry Bonin had been public works director for 20 years or so. And uh, <clears throat> circumstances were right. He had reached an age where he was pretty much ready to go. And uh, Larry decided to retire. Um, and Bill Claffey was his second in command. But uh, for a job like DPW director and many other jobs, we don't just give the job to the next in line. We do a search, and we did. We published. A search out there. We interviewed uh, three or four candidates, uh, including Bill, and we found that Bill uh, not only had the appropriate experience, but uh, was just the right guy for the job. And that is the God's honest truth. Uh, it's not just me interviewing uh, for that position. It's several other people in the room making sure that we get the right guy for the right job. And uh, Bill, Bill's been with the town for you know 20 years already, 17 I think, and he uh, did an excellent job while Larry was on administrative leave. Mm -hmm. And Bill will do an ex excellent job as DPW director. He's doing a good job up at the transfer station. Um, and by the way, mm. uh, all the nice things that I've said about Bill yeah. takes nothing away from what Larry Bonin did. Okay. Larry Bonin was an excellent DPW director for 20 years in the town of Old Saybrook. He dedicated most of his adult life to the town of Old Saybrook. So uh, I've thanked Larry publicly, but I want to thank him again on your show. Sure. Um, and one other thing I'll mention to you yeah. uh, and for the viewers, this Saturday at, I think it's, one to five okay. at the Elks in Westbrook. Right. If you know Larry Bonin and you want to say thank you, you can come by. Twenty-five dollars a ticket. All right. And you can uh, say goodbye to Larry and have a couple appetizers and maybe a drink and um, say goodbye to Larry Bonin. Wow. We're having a basically a retirement party right. for him. Uh, so this Saturday. So we're shooting this on a Monday. Correct. And so uh, this Saturday, I think, would be January 27th that's at the a, Elks, yes, that's correct. Elks in Westbrook from 1 to 5. So, Pete Mazzetti, I expect to see you there. Will Carl Fortuna be there? Yes, okay. I, of course I will. Of course so, will. we're in the middle of budget season, yeah. and uh, Larry's party is from 1 to 5, but uh, from 8.30 to about 11.30, we actually do a budget session with the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen. We meet on a Saturday and we talk budget. Um, well, that sounds fun. So I, I know, it's fun. <laughs> Saturday, but it's yeah, right. the middle of the winter. <laughs> right. And, um, uh, you know, I thank, I thank all the volunteers. The Board of Finance is, they're elected, but right. they're volunteers. And I thank them for coming out on a Saturday, but we get a lot done. We get a lot done, it's a morning session. Uh, we give them a little coffee. We give them a few bagels. There you go. And we get a lot done in the morning. We do, we've been doing this for about five years uh, where we all come in and we discuss probably like seven or eight department budgets. Okay. And it gets us a long ways towards the final product. And this year. Yes. Th yes. This year, the final product mm -hmm. uh, will result in a budget. But the mill rate, we, yeah. we talked offline yes. uh, about reval. Right. And uh, we have, Saybrook had revaluation as of October 1 
um, of 2023, which will affect the taxes on July 1 of 24. Right. And um, we estimate that our mill rate will go from about 20.48 to somewhere in the 15 level. Okay. 15 okay. and change. So as you can imagine, Pete, um, with the price of property these days and um, the demand for property, mm -hmm. um, the price of houses is way up here. Yes. And when the price of houses goes up and the grand list goes up, the, the mill rate comes down. Right. And so that's what's happening this year. Um, I know my house yep. that I live in went up 45% in value Ooh. from 2018 to 2023. And that gets reflected in the mill rate. Um, the budget isn't going to go up an excessive amount. The budget will go up two to two and a half percent, like it always does, like okay. it like it typically does. I shouldn't say always, uh, but the mill rate will come down because the grand list is growing right. by forty to fifty percent. It's going to go, and that's what happens. But anyway, so we're doing the budget meeting in the morning, Saturday, and then in the afternoon, Larry's, Larry's going. Party. Larry's retirement party there you go now how yeah go, no go ahead now how is the budget looking for the town yeah i mean it's look you know the the schools are coming in at i think around two to three percent my budget uh on the town side is probably coming in at one and a half to two percent okay. so you know it's it's not an atypical budget year um it's pretty typical we have always one of the strategies we've tried to employ is the long game. And we've, we've really tried to avoid spikes in the budget. Right. And I think we've done a pretty good job at doing that. Um, and this year will be no different. Uh, if we can implement uh, large projects over the course of two years, right. three years, we try to plan for that by putting some money aside this year, money aside next year. And then by the time we get there, we have the money. Right. Good example of that. Yeah. Uh, Two or three years ago, we had a culvert blow out on a road called Beaver Dam Trail. Beaver Dam, Beaver Dam Trail, ready for this? Mm -hmm. There's about 20 houses on Beaver Dam Trail. It's just a little road. It's a dead end road oh, okay. um, off of uh, Schoolhouse Road. Well, we had, we had horrendous rains. It was Tropical Storm Ida, and we had horrendous rains and a culvert collapsed okay that's going to cost two million dollars to repair two million dollars it serves 20 houses it's not a big culvert but the cost of repair will be two million dollars we got a grant from the state of connecticut okay for 50 percent of the end cost but the end cost is two million dollars so the town for a very unexpected event still needs to get $1 million. We need to come up with a million dollars. Okay. Right? right? So we're gonna do that over the course of two or three budget years. Okay. So at the end of the 23 fiscal year, we put $500,000 in a, an account so that we can pay for that culvert when it comes due. And this year, we'll put another two to 400,000 in that account off budget so that when um, we finally go out to bid for this project, we will have our money right. squared away and ready to go. And um, we, got a, we got a state of Connecticut grant, like I indicated to you, that will pay for 50% of the costs. But still, we need to come up with a million dollars. And you know, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of money. Nobody's got a million dollars hanging around. That, that's exactly right. So you have to plan for these things. Right. And really, that's what we try to do. Yeah. So. Um, and then the legislative session is coming up too. Okay. Um, but what do you hear about the legislative session? I, I'm not hearing much yet. I actually had our local state representative on not long ago. Who's that? Chris Anaskovich. Oh, Chris Anaskovich, of course. Chris, I had Chris on with me. Yep. He's like, we're getting ready to go into the legislative session. He's like, it's a short session this year. Yeah. So, but it's also a re-election year for those it's a re-election year, so they want to be careful, right? Exactly. They either they probably want to give money away, is my guess, if it's yeah. a re-election year. But um, yeah, I mean, the big thing that is going to come out of this session 
for me as uh, a person representing a municipality is they're changing the way we tax motor vehicles. They are. Yeah. So um, they want to go to a, uh, and it makes sense, a manufacturer suggested retail price. So if you buy a car, right, and that car is worth 50, 40, well, we'll say $40,000. Okay. Um, that car will immediately go on a, I think it's a uh, 15 or 20 year amortization schedule where it will decline in value by 5% a year. All right? Okay. So the state of Connecticut wants to implement that with this session. They're probably going to do it. The way we currently do it is we value that car. Okay. So we value it based on fair market value, which is very different than just having it go down 5% a year. Give you an example, during, okay. during the COVID pandemic, right. what happened to used car values? They, went, they skyrocketed, they skyrocketed up. They went up. In a case like this, with yeah. the new law, that won't happen. They will continue to go down. So in the town budget, it caused a an aberration okay. because used cars technically or not technically usually decline in value right <laughs> i have a 14 year old car that's going to decline in value but during covid when new, you couldn't get a new car and everybody was looking to buy a used, used car, car right? the prices went up so on our grand list we had this artificial increase in value of vehicles. So the state of Connecticut said, we want to avoid that in the future. And the way to be fair to everybody is to just say, your car will go down in value from the value at which it is currently at right. every year. And it, it probably is a very fair way to do it. I just want to make sure that the town of Old Saybrook yeah. and of course, every other town in the state we don't want to lose money with the new system. Right. And every time the, our good state legislators start doing something, mm -hmm. where they start messing with our taxes, right. we, we lose money. Right. So, um, you know, motor vehicle taxes are a very significant part of town revenue. Correct. And um, statewide, it's about a billion dollars in car taxes that are raised by municipalities. So. When you start messing with the formula, mm -hmm. that can have a huge impact locally right. on the mill rate. And if you're not going to have it on the car tax, it's going to go on the property tax. Right. And we have the most regressive property tax in the country <laughs> here in Old Saybrook, uh, here in Connecticut. Right. Um, probably New York is right with us. Um, in terms of the property tax and its um, regressive effect on people who own houses. Um, so anyway, that's a long, a long way to say that I, I, I get a little nervous when state legislators start messing with a portion of the revenue that we are going to raise on a local level. Would you mind sticking around for another segment? I'd be happy to. Okay. We'll be right back. You matter. You matter. You matter. And your words matter too. Your words matter. What you say in the hallways at school or in the student section at a game matters. Words can be hurtful. Words can be offensive. Words can leave scars. Words can also inspire. Support and uplift. You and your words. Are they both important? As a matter of fact, yes. This week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. Hello and welcome to Arts and Entertainment. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti sitting here with the illustrious first selectman of the town of Old Chamber, Carl Fortuna. You're very nice. See? 
I can't believe yeah. <laughs> this was probably the nicest you and I are to each other yeah. tonight. Off camera, it's very <laughs> yeah, different. <laughs> yeah, off, off, off camera, all bets are off. So yeah. I understand we wanted to talk about the Chili Festival that's coming up in Old Saber. You have that. Um, so the Chili Fest is the first Saturday in March. Yes. Do you go to that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the chamber runs an amazing event. Uh, yeah. Judy, Judy, Judy Sullivan. Sullivan, yeah. That is a chamber event. Uh, they get about 30 Chili Fest uh, folks who make wonderful chili. Mm -hmm. If you're into that much chili. Oh, yeah. Um, it's a lot of chili. Yes, it is a lot um, of chili. But it's a fun day, and as you know, people are itching to get out of their houses By that. that time of year, yes. you know? And, you know, whether it's cold, whether it's warm, whether it's a little rainy, people are just, um, they're, they're good to go. Right. And I think it's like 10 bucks or something like 15 that. bucks or something. And you, it's a fundraiser. Uh, they, they, I think, donate the proceeds partly to high school scholarships. Yes. Yep. Um, so they... It's a great job, and it, the amount of people it brings to Main Street Old Saybrook is staggering. Yes. Um, uh, it's just one of the prime events of the spring, late winter, early spring, for the town of Old Saybrook. But the prime event, the main event, is Celebrate Saybrook. Yeah. Which you didn't go to last year. No. No. It's in June. That kind of hurts my feelings, nope. you know? I'll be um, there this year. All right. You should be. Yes. And you should bring a film crew. Okay. okay. We could do that. Um, so this year it's going to be June 23rd. Last year was our uh, inaugural event. Okay. And it was a huge success. We probably had five to 10,000 people. We had a lot of people. Oh, oh man. And, um, and we planned that event last year in right. about three months. Ooh. Oh, man. I don't, I mean, we were struggling to get food vendors. We were struggling, but it ended up being a massive success. This year, we started planning it immediately after. Right. And we, we did a doodle poll to make, you know, um, to ask people how they perceived the event. What could we do better? Uh, and so this year's event, assuming good weather. Right. Um, you know, I mean, there's no rain date for this. No. But... Uh, assuming good weather, I think we're going to have a huge crowd. We're going to do great publicity on it. We already have probably 20 food vendors, lots of food trucks, lots of crafters. Right. We're going to have at least five bands. So we're going to have two bands on the main stage. And then um, we know where uh, the new brewery is going in, yes. um, Thimble Island. Yes. Uh, on their patio, right. we're probably going to have some more acoustic acts. Oh, cool. Uh, maybe three of those. Um, last year it was really hot. Yeah. And people were that. like, you know, it was a little too hot. They were getting sunburned and stuff like that. So, you know, you pray for good weather. And when you get good weather, people are like, too much sun, but yeah. if you had bad weather, people would be like, where's the sun? Exactly. But if we have a very hot day, uh, one of the things we're either going to buy or we're going to rent is what they call a mister, you know, a mist. Yeah. So it'll throw it'll water, throw cool water mist, mist a yeah. cool mist, yes. um, and you'll be able to walk through it. Cool. Yeah. So, and we have tons of stuff for the kids, and that'll be on June 23rd of this year. It's okay. a Sunday. It'll be from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. Uh, and the band we had last year to close the event yeah. was a band called so Soul Sound Review. I've and heard we, of them. We had people dancing. They're like 10 guys. They got a horn section, tons of Motown music. Just a blast. I mean, so I'm really excited about this year's event. Um, uh, we have a, our main sponsor is From You Flowers. Um, yep. Uh, Never heard of them. <laughs> uh, full disclosure, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. he's an employee of From You Flowers, but that is not the reason. I happen to, <laughs> I happen to know. To, uh -huh. I don't, I don't want people to think you <laughs> have anything to do with it necessarily. Nope. Uh, but uh, the owner, uh, the the not the owner. Um, one of the owners of From You Flowers, uh, Mike Chapin, is uh, gracious and um, generous enough to put forth a 
fairly large chunk of money to pay for most of the costs of the event. And then uh, we get vendor fees. Our okay. vendor fees, we charge about $100 if you want to come vend. And we get five or 6000 from that. Um, and it's just, and it's an awesome event. So I would just remind people to circle it on their calendar. Don't go away that weekend and come to celebrate Saybrook. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, sure. a couple other things, okay. but um, people, by the time they view the show, will yes. have heard that the town of Old Saybrook had a referendum uh, yeah. Monday, January 22nd, which Correct. is tonight. Um, and the purpose of that referendum is to uh, try to figure out um, how the town of Old Saybrook can better attract and retain police officers. So attracting and retaining police officers all over the country is a problem right now. Right. And our chief of police does a very good job, uh, but the town of Old Saybrook is desperately low on police officers right now. I mean, we have 17 or 18, and normally we have 25. Um, and this is true all over Connecticut. Um, and so what we're trying to do is figure out um, how to best attract and retain officers and to determine also whether in fact we have a problem in town um, with the way our department is set up. So mm -hmm. uh, it could be that police officers, we, we've had, we've never really had a full police force okay. because police officers come, they leave, and we're always struggling to make sure we have 25 cops. Right. Um, and we want to know why. We want to know whether, is, is the department too small? Maybe police officers don't feel they have an opportunity for advancement. Um, do they not want to be in a small town Old Saybrook? Maybe some officers want a little bit more excitement, you know? Um, not that there's not excitement in Old Saybrook. There is sometimes. Right. We just had uh, uh, an exciting event over the weekend. Yes, you did. Everybody, everybody is okay, thank God. Good. Um, but uh, we want to make sure that what, and it could be benefits. It could be pay and benefits. Right. You know, are we offering a competitive salary? Are we offering competitive post-employment benefits? So this study is going to, um, if it passes tonight at the referendum, mm -hmm. I'll know at 8 o'clock tonight. And if it does, we're going to try to figure this out so that um, Chief Spira has the best department he can possibly have. And when he hires a cop, that cop hopefully will be there for the long term, because that's what we want, and that's what any community wants. Right. They want police officers there for the long time, so long term. So, um, and that is tonight. And uh, maybe next time I come on, I'll have a little bit more to talk about with yeah. regard to that, if it if it passes. Um, and um, yeah, a couple other things going on Go here on. and there. You Go for it. Go for it. Go. Um, so we're doing a study on Mariner's Way. Yes, um, we talked about that last time we were on. Yeah, um, and that study is moving along. We're, we finally got our market study uh, on that. I haven't looked at it in depth, but we really want to take a look at that area of town to make sure that we can develop it and uh, find, um, um, Oh, how do I say it? I don't want to say stores or retail, but whether it's housing or whether it's demand for goods and services, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that what we put out there right. is the best product we can put out there. You know that area of town, Pete. I do. <clears throat> that area of town has been underutilized, underdeveloped. There's buildings everywhere. Yes. But a lot of them are either empty, um, there's one large piece of property that's empty. So we're just trying to look at a better way to, um, to um, make that a, a more robust area of town okay. that throws off tax revenue for the town mm -hmm. and serves our population in the best way possible. And we're also doing a study in Town Hall. Um, one of the things that I opened myself up to um, <laughs> Uh -oh. is we want to make sure that when people come into town hall, they are getting 
the most efficient service, and we want to make sure that we're doing things the way we should be doing them. <laughs> right. So I've been in office 12 years plus. Right. And I've made a lot of changes. Okay. I'm in a little bit of a bubble in Old Saybrook. <laughs> we have 169 towns in the state of Old Saybrook. In the state of Old Saybrook, you uh, have 169 in, oh towns? In the state How about in the state of Connecticut, you have 169 towns? Well, pretty fair, soon, you know, everything will be Old Saybrook, If you're going to have right? 169 towns in the town of Old Saybrook, you might want to call Joe DeLong and let him know. I deserve what you just said. I deserve <laughs> yes, it. Yes, okay? you do. All right. <laughs> but we have 169 towns. Everybody operates their town hall kind of the way the, they feel like they should, right? right? And so what we did is we brought in an outside consultant to All take right. take a look and um, take a look at the way when people come in and um, get a service or the way we're doing our, um, with our administrative help, okay. make sure we're using them most effectively. Okay. Um, to make sure that our workflow, are, so we talked about property taxes earlier tonight. Mm -hmm. So property taxes, the building office, the fire marshal, the tax assessor, the tax collector, the town clerk, they're all intertwined right. in tax collection. Right. So are we most effectively operating our town hall to make sure that um, when that people are getting the most bang for their buck yeah. and that people in town hall are in effect optimizing the way they're working. And we're, we're doing a study, I know that sounds like consultant speak, it sounds like government <laughs> speak, and it is. But taxpayers pay for a service. Right. And we just want to make sure that we are offering the best service. So we hired a consultant to look at Town Hall. Carl Fortuna, we're out of time. So we are? We are. I want to thank you for coming down. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you for listening to oh, absolutely. me going on about government. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate it. Not a problem. On behalf of Carl Fortuna, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Pete.